I'm glad you could join us. Go ahead and stab the like button and stick around for the next untold story. In the spring of 2021, Alexei Petrov, a Ukrainian documentary filmmaker with a fascination for modern ruins and ghost towns, embarked on a project that would take him deep into one of the most infamous exclusion zones on the planet, Chernobyl. Accompanied by a small team of fellow adventurers and paranormal enthusiasts, Alexei planned to capture footage for a documentary exploring the eerie aftermath of the Chernobyl disaster, focusing on the stories of hauntings and unexplained phenomena reported by those who had dared to visit since the meltdown in 1986. The group entered the zone equipped with cameras, Geiger counters, and an ample supply of protective gear. Their destination was Pripyat, the ghost town once home to the workers of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant and their families. Now it stood frozen in time, a chilling snapshot of the Soviet era, its buildings slowly being reclaimed by nature. As they walked through the abandoned streets of Pripyat, Alexei couldn't shake the heavy feeling of dread that settled over him. The towering apartment blocks, the iconic Ferris wheel in the amusement park, and the desolate classrooms filled with decaying books and toys, all whispered of the lives abruptly upended by the disaster. Their first night in Pripyat, the team set up camp in an old hotel overlooking the town square. As darkness enveloped the city, the lack of electricity and the isolation from the outside world made the shadows seem deeper and more menacing. Alexei and his team began their night shoot using infrared cameras and EVP, electronic voice phenomenon, recorders, in an attempt to capture any signs of the supernatural. The eerie silence of the town was unsettling. Every sound seemed amplified, a distant crash as part of a building succumbed to decay, the rustle of leaves as wildlife scurried through the underbrush. Yet there was something else, a softer sound that didn't fit. A faint whisper of voices, as though conversations were being carried on the wind from days long past. Focused on their equipment, the team moved to the old school building, a site known for numerous reports of paranormal activity. Inside, the hallways were littered with debris, and the walls were covered in peeling paint and graffiti. As they ventured deeper into the building, Alexei's Geiger counter began to emit a harsh, continuous beep a reminder of the invisible danger that still lurked in the air and dust around them. In the depths of the school, they reached the auditorium, a large room with rows of decaying seats facing a stage that was once used for school plays and meetings. Setting up their cameras, the team spread out to cover more ground. Alexei wandered up to the balcony for a wide shot of the room below. As he set up his camera, Alexei glanced down and froze. There, in the beam of his flashlight, on the dust-covered stage below were fresh footprints. They led from one side of the stage to the other and disappeared into the wings. The size and shape of the prints were oddly distorted, as if whoever or whatever had made them was not entirely human. Shaken, Alexei called out to his team, his voice echoing through the empty auditorium. No response came. The silence returned, heavier than before. Concerned, Alexei hurried back down to the main floor, the beam of his flashlight darting around the dark corners of the room. As he reached the stage, the air grew inexplicably colder, and the faint whisper of voices became a chorus of indistinct chatter, growing louder as though approaching from a distance. The sense of dread overwhelmed him. The stories of Pripyat being haunted no longer seemed like mere tales. The story of Alexei Petrov and his team, exploring the haunted ruins of Chernobyl, was far from over. As the whispers grew into discernible words, Alexei realized that the voices were calling out not just to each other, but to him, pulling him deeper into the mystery and darkness of Pripyat. As the indistinct chatter crystallized into clearer voices, Alexei felt the hairs on the back of his neck stand up. The voices seemed to be crying out, some in fear, others in a tone of melancholy longing. He quickly turned on his camera to record what was happening the red recording light blinking silently in the oppressive atmosphere of the auditorium. Alexei tried to locate his team by radio, but static filled the airwaves, rendering communication useless. The building seemed to consume sound, the walls muffling his attempts to call out. Anxiety gripped him as he realized he was alone with the unseen voices of Pripyat's past residents. Gathering his courage, Alexei decided to follow the footprints that led off stage. Perhaps they would lead him to his team or provide an explanation for the eerie phenomena. 
With each step, the temperature seemed to drop further, and the voices grew more intense, more desperate. As he reached the stage wings, Alexei noticed a faint light emanating from a cracked door leading to the lower levels of the school. The light was unnatural, flickering in a rhythm that made no sense, as if it was breathing. The footprints led directly to the door, and as he pushed it open, a cold gust of air met him, carrying with it a putrid smell of decay. Descending the narrow staircase behind the door, Alexei's flashlight revealed old props and costumes scattered on the floor, moldy and rotting from years of neglect. The light at the bottom of the stairs grew brighter, guiding him to a small, secluded room that seemed to have been a storage area for stage equipment. Inside the room, the source of the light became apparent. A single, old-fashioned bulb hung from the ceiling, swinging gently. Below it, arranged in a circle, were old dolls dressed in various costumes, each with its face upturned towards the light. It was a macabre scene, and for a moment, Alexei doubted the reality of what he was seeing. The dolls seemed almost alive, their eyes reflecting the light, as if gazing into the souls of those who dared intrude. Suddenly, the light bulb flickered rapidly and went out, plunging Alexei into darkness. The chorus of voices crescendoed into a scream, then stopped abruptly, leaving a deafening silence. Alexei's heart pounded in his chest as he fumbled to relight his flashlight, the darkness around him oppressive and thick. When the light flickered back to life, the dolls were gone, as if they had never been there. Confused and terrified, Alexei felt the urge to flee, to escape the haunted school and find his team. He turned to leave, but as he did, his light caught something in the corner of the room, an old mirror, cracked and smeared with grime. Approaching the mirror hesitantly, Alexei wiped it clean with his sleeve. As the reflection cleared, he saw not his own image, but the faces of several people, distorted by fear and pain, pressing against the glass as if trapped within. Their mouths moved silently, desperately trying to communicate. Alexei recoiled in horror, his mind struggling to comprehend the supernatural spectacle. Rushing from the room, Alexei made his way back upstairs, his only thought to escape the building and find his missing team members. As he ascended the staircase, the whispers returned, now sounding like warnings, urging him to hurry. The story of Alexei Petrov, lost in the depths of Chernobyl's haunted landscape, was far from over. Each step took him further into a nightmare, the boundaries between the past and present blurred by the echoes of the disaster that continued to haunt the living. As he emerged from the school into the gray light of dawn, the desolate city of Pripyat loomed around him, its secrets still unfolding, its voices still calling from the shadows. Emerging from the decrepit school building into the dim morning light, Alexei felt the oppressive weight of the building lift slightly, but the eeriness of Pripyat's abandoned streets quickly reinstated a sense of dread. He paused, taking deep breaths of the crisp air, trying to calm his racing heart. His mind spun with the haunting images and sounds he had encountered, struggling to piece together the surreal experiences into something tangible. The silence of the city was unnerving. The usual sounds of wildlife that had reclaimed the area were absent, as if even the animals sensed something amiss this dawn. Alexei glanced around, hoping to spot any member of his team, but the wide, desolate boulevards of Pripyat were empty. The haunting presence of the dolls and the faces in the mirror lingered in his mind, urging him to find his friends and leave this place. He activated his GPS device again, hoping for a signal now that he was outside the school's thick walls. To his relief, the device flickered to life, showing his position and the last known positions of his team members. They were scattered, which was unusual for their disciplined exploration protocol. Concerned for their safety, Alexei decided to head towards the closest point, near the iconic Ferris wheel in the amusement park, a location that had become a symbol of the Chernobyl disaster's eerie legacy. As he walked, Alexei tried to contact his team via radio, but only static answered his calls. The silence was suddenly broken by a faint sound, not the whispers or screams from before, but a clear, distinct weeping. It was soft, sorrowful, and seemed to be coming from ahead near the amusement park. Compelled by a mix of concern and an unyielding sense of responsibility to uncover the source, Alexei quickened his pace towards the sound. The streets twisted and turned, lined with the skeletal remains of buildings and overgrown foliage, until he reached the park. The sight of the rusting Ferris wheel looming in the fog was chilling. 
The weeping grew louder as he approached, morphing into a cacophony of desperate sobs. It seemed to emanate from all directions, disorienting Alexei as he stepped further into the park. Then, in the mist, figures began to materialize. They were not clear at first, just shadows shifting in the fog, but as Alexei drew closer, their forms became more distinct. They were people, or at least they seemed to be, ethereal, translucent, their features blurred as if seen through water. They wandered the park aimlessly, their cries echoing off the rusted rides and decaying game booths. Frozen in place, Alexei watched as one of the figures, a woman, turned towards him. Her eyes, hollow with despair, met his, and she reached out a hand as if pleading for help. Before he could react, another scream pierced the air, snapping Alexei out of his trance. It was a scream of terror, not sorrow, and it was undeniably real. It was coming from the direction of the Ferris wheel. His instinct as a filmmaker and a human being to help overrode his fear. Clutching his camera like a shield, Alexei ran towards the Ferris wheel, the ethereal figures fading into the mist as he passed, their cries dimming behind him. As he neared the base of the Ferris wheel, the screams grew louder, more urgent. The story of Alexei Petrov, caught in the haunted grasp of Pripyat, was far from over. Each step forward took him deeper into a past that refused to remain silent, a past that clawed its way into the present with each scream, each sob, each whisper carried by the wind. What lay ahead at the Ferris wheel would test the limits of his courage and his sanity. Alexei raced toward the Ferris wheel, his breath coming in sharp gasps as the chilling screams intensified. The mist seemed to thicken with each step, enveloping him in a cold, damp shroud that muffled the sounds of his footsteps. His heart pounded in his chest, fear and adrenaline pushing him forward despite the overwhelming urge to turn back. As he reached the base of the Ferris wheel, Alexei stumbled upon a horrifying scene. One of his team members, Irina, was trapped under one of the old carnival booths, her leg caught under a collapsed support beam. Her face was pale, her eyes wide with pain and terror. She was screaming for help, her voice hoarse and desperate. Alexei rushed to her side, dropping his camera and pulling at the debris with desperate strength. Hold on, Irina! I'm here! He shouted, trying to reassure her as he worked to free her. Irina's eyes were filled with tears, but her relief at seeing him was palpable. Alexei, it... it was following me, she gasped, her voice trembling with fear. Who was following you? What happened? Alexei asked, glancing nervously around the dimly lit area as he continued to pull away pieces of wood and metal. I don't know. It wasn't human, Irina whispered, wincing in pain. It was like a shadow, moving around, whispering things I couldn't understand. It chased me here. Alexei's blood ran cold as he remembered the ethereal figures he had seen wandering in the mist. He doubled his efforts, and with a final pull, he managed to free Irina. Helping her to her feet, he noticed she was badly injured and needed medical attention immediately. We need to get out of here, Alexei said urgently, supporting Irina as they started to make their way back towards the main path. As they limped away from the Ferris wheel, Alexei picked up his camera, unwilling to leave it behind despite everything. That's when they heard it. A low, growling sound that seemed to come from everywhere and nowhere. The mist around them swirled violently as if stirred by an unseen force. Alexei turned the camera on, using the night vision to peer into the mist. Through the viewfinder he saw it, a formless black mass shifting and roiling like smoke, its core darker than the night around them. The entity moved with unnatural speed, circling them, closing in. Alexei and Irina quickened their pace, but Irina's injury slowed them down. The dark mass enveloped them, the temperature dropping so sharply that their breath turned to frost. Alexei felt a coldness seeping into his bones, a deep chill that seemed to claw at his very soul. In a desperate act, Alexei pointed the camera at the entity and flashed the light directly into the mass. For a moment, the darkness reeled back and he saw it. A face within the darkness, twisted in rage and sorrow, its eyes a piercing, unnatural white. The camera's battery died at that moment, plunging them back into darkness. The last thing Alexei heard was Arena's scream cut abruptly short as the darkness swallowed them completely. The entity enveloped Alexei, and he felt himself falling into an abyss, the cold whispering into his ear, words he could not understand, promises of endless night. When the rescue teams arrived later, 
Following the GPS trackers from Alexei's equipment, they found the camera lying on the ground near the Ferris wheel. Its battery drained, the last image frozen on the screen, a face in the darkness, full of malice and ancient grief. Of Alexei and Arena, there was no sign, no trace. They had vanished, leaving behind only whispers and shadows, swallowed by the haunted mist of Chernobyl. Thank you for listening. Now watch this video, 